praise the Lord. Welcome to our Thursday morning devotion. We continue with the theme of the man that is investing in the kingdom of God. Investing our talents, investing our abilities, investing our resources, investing our gifts in the kingdom of God. And we are reminded that the kingdom of God goes beyond the church. It goes beyond our fellowships. It is about the family of believers that we ought to to work and to invest in the kingdom of God. Remember, our themes comes from the book of Luke, chapter 19, where we are talking about the 10 minas and the 10 servants who are given 10 minas, one mina each. And we are reminded in verse 13 that they were given a responsibility that they should go out there, invest until the master returned. And every morning when God allows you to see a new day. Just remember it is a new, another opportunity to invest in his kingdom. Remember, whatever you do for the kingdom of God will not be forgotten. It will not be in vain. We are investing in the kingdom of God. We are investing in he who has given us that life. And we know he always rewards what we do. He always rewards our hard work. He always appreciates when we work for him. We are co-workers working for him and also working with him. We are not alone in this kingdom. He is with us. He is leading us to this commission of going out and making disciples. Jesus Christ said that I will leave you with the Holy Spirit that will not be alone, but he will be with you and also within you. And so as you start this day, as you prepare to go to work, as you prepare to do your business, just remember you are not alone. The Holy Spirit is with you and is also within you. And remember, as you do everything else, you are doing it for the glory of God. Whichever work you do, whichever job you are in, whichever business you are working in, you are reminded that in it, you should be investing in the kingdom of God. And that is our message today, that the kingdom business goes beyond Sundays. That the kingdom business we are called to do goes beyond our day of worship. Yes, we know that we have invested in our church. We are investing in our church services. You may be there and you are serving in the church. You are serving in different departments. You are serving in your cell group. You are serving in a certain ministry. It is good. And our business, that is exactly our business. But our business, which is the kingdom business, goes beyond Sundays. It goes beyond that day when we congregate. In fact, much of what we are expected by our master is the six days that we are outside the church. That's when we can be able to impact the world well. That's when we can show that indeed we are salt of the earth and also light of the world. It is only when we are outside the church that our true salvation can be seen. How we relate with other people that are not our Christians, that are not our church members. How we relate with those who are below our class, those who live within our neighborhood, those who we relate with day on our day-to-day -day lives. And our text to lead us into this theme of the kingdom of business goes beyond Sunday. I read from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 46 if we start from verse 42, this is how the apostles and the believers, those who believed early, the early church, how they lived together. The Bible says from verse 42, that is Acts 2, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were to gather and had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We see how the early church, the early Christians, were devoted to invest in the kingdom of God. After 
the ascension of Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that they were devoted, they were committed to what they were supposed to do in the kingdom of God, that they were committed to the apostles' teaching. They could come together and read the word of God, and day by day they served one another. The Bible says they served one another day by day, not only on the worship day that is Sunday, but every day was a day to invest in the kingdom of God. And they were committed to the apostles' teaching. Today we know that the teaching of Christ, the teachings of the Bible, the gospel teachings are the apostles' teaching, that they were committed to hear the word of God. They could meet and pray together. They could meet and break bread together, have communion with one another. And it was a daily activity. It was a daily role to invest in the kingdom of God. Then we are told that they served all people and this increased their numbers. They started as few, but how they served other people at different places. We are told that at their homes they would meet and they would fellowship together. They would go out and preach the word of God and meet later and pray together. That impacted people in that area and they increased in numbers. And we are called, we are also called to reach others with the gospel of Christ. That though we meet on Sundays, day-to-day -day activities, in our day-to-day -day activities, we should also involve God and do his work wherever we are with those people we are living with. Remember, they were serving everyone, the young, the old, the rich, the poor. We are also called to serve everyone, regardless of who they are, that we should go out and impact those who are employed, those who are in businesses. If you have young people around you, you must reach out to them and try your best that you may increase the number because God in your investment will bring those people to the kingdom of God. They were committed to their calling. They knew of their calling. They knew what God expects from them. And today we are challenged that do we know of our calling? Do you know of your calling in that workplace? Do you know of your calling in that neighborhood? Do you even know of your calling in that family you live, you are in? Do you know of your calling when you are traveling in that bus, in that car? Do you know of what God expects of you at that particular time when you are doing something? They knew and they took every opportunity and seized every opportunity to serve God, to preach the gospel of God, to pray with one another. We should look out for opportunities. Yes, we know that we are serving at different places. We are also working in different fields. But look out for opportunities. Wherever you are, just look out what can you do to impact these people and know the love of God. What does God expect you to do where you are going today? What does God expect you to do with the people you will be meeting today? Let us look out for opportunities that we may serve God at where we are. Remember, this, this business, the kingdom business, it goes beyond our Sunday worship. Yes, we may have our roles in our worship services, but it goes beyond what we are doing in church. It goes beyond what we are doing in our family. We should go out and devote ourselves as they devoted, that they went out and preached the word of God that they could meet, and how they lived impacted others. Many desired to live like them. Many loved how they loved one another, how they called each other brother and sister, and people loved their way of life, that they lived a life that is worth of their calling. The same way we are called, and we know, as the light of the world, we are called to devote ourselves to a life that is worth of our calling. We are devoted, we are committed, we are called to devote our speech to speak as those who are called and living a life that is worth of our calling. That how we think, how we relate with people should be different from others. Because remember, all these are gifts. Our abilities are gifts and talents. When you are allowed and given opportunity to speak to people, 
Take it as an opportunity to serve God and to exercise your talent. That talent, they have entrusted you to make a speech. God also entrusts you that in that speech, you may also impact others. How you live your day-to-day -day life, just being there with people, that is an opportunity that God has allowed you, that people may see how you live and you may impact them. In the book of 1 Peter, Peter also writes, in the first letter of Peter, chapter 4, chapter 4, reading from verse 10, he says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If one serves, they should do so, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. That let us remember to be stewards of what God has granted us, whichever gift you have. And he tell us, he tells us that they are also given in different forms. Just being allowed to lead in a company, in a school, that is a gift, the gift of leadership. If you have to lead, then lead diligently. God has granted you and blessed you with resources. There is that gift of generosity. He says that give cheerfully. Allow yourself to be used by God for the glory of him and also to do his will. We have been gifted differently. And he says, let us use these gifts to serve others. It is about serving others. It is, serving God is about serving others. If we have to impact and use our gifts as God intends of us, then we ought to serve others. These gifts are not for us, for our own gain, but for the gain of others. That in doing so, then we may preach the word of God, we may impact the society and bring many to the kingdom of God. Remember, the gift you have, the talent you have, the opportunities you receive, they all come from God. God is the owner of everything. In fact, we all belong to him. And he calls us to be faithful stewards of what he has granted us. That position, that resource, that job, that business, that knowledge, that opportunity you have, those people around you, that family, they all belong to God. And it is for you to invest in them. Do it and serve others. Let us be true servants, serving others, knowing that we are called to be servants. Remember we said we are co-workers in the kingdom of God. He is working within us and with us. We are to go out and know that we are not alone because God is with us. He will walk with us and help us to do. He says, if anyone speaks, then they should speak the very words of God. How many times are we granted that opportunity to address people, maybe in our neighborhood, at our workplaces? Do we seize that opportunity to speak the very words that God intends you to say? How many times are we allowed to lead a group of people or a larger group of people? Do we do it diligently that they can know that those who believe in God can lead diligently, that they can lead faithfully? How many times are we allowed to be faithful or be stewards of the resources of others, that we are trusted with their issues, we are trusted with their resources, we are trusted with their opportunities? Do we serve them? faithfully, that they can know that indeed we are believers and we are not like how the world lives. In a world that we are living today, the much we can do is not to go out and preach the word of God by mouth, but more so by our actions. Remember, what we do will impact them more and they will see, they will truly see, because this business goes beyond Sunday. It goes beyond our corporate worship. Yes, we may be good Christians on Sunday, but let us show and prove that indeed we are believers. Wherever we go, the other times, those people we live with, those people we relate with, let, us, let them know that indeed we are Christians. 
And that way will bring many to Christ and we will increase the number of Christians. We will impact them and also help them that they may desire to live like us. As you invest in the church, in the corporate worship, in that muta, let us also remember that the society needs us, that the business people need us, that those we work with in our companies need us. There is work to do wherever we go with whoever we relate with. Let us go out and invest. All days, day after day, it is an opportunity to invest in the kingdom of God. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.